first story. Dying OP gave his guardianship of his son to his aunt over his mom. Now mom is furious, demanding why he is taking away her only memory of him. I-21 have a son who just turned one. His mom, who was my girlfriend, died in labor along with the other baby she was carrying. I was diagnosed with terminal cancer three months ago, and I don't have very long left at most two months. I have accepted that I'm going to die, but now I have to think about what's best for my son. I had to decide who my boy would go to, and I thought my mother 55 naturally. But then I started to think of her situation as my older brother 29 lives with her along with his five kids, all under five, and I decided not to as mom works, and my brother, TBH, isn't really raising his kids, more dragging them up and can be neglectful. I wasn't going to put my son in that environment, as I want someone to actually care for him. So I then thought of my aunt 33 on my dad's side. She is a good mother, and her husband is a good father to their three girls, and I know they could provide for my son, I asked them. And they agreed. My mother however, found out that I wasn't leaving my son with her, and she got angry with me, saying that she's losing me, and now losing her grandson. I gave her my reasons and said that she realistically can't raise him, while she's basically raising a man-child and his kids. It all ended in an even bigger argument, and now I'm cooling off at home. I understand that things are terrible for her right now, as I won't be here soon, but my aunt is a much better choice. It's not like my son won't know who she is, as the walk between her and my aunt's is only five minutes. Am I the arsehole? Update. First, I'd like to say thanks to everyone who gave their suggestions and well wishes. Unfortunately, I didn't get to read everybody's comments as there were too many. But thanks to everyone anyway. Now on to the update. I gave my mother a few days to calm herself down before speaking to her again. And she eventually came around. She recognizes that it's not optimal for my son to stay with her. And that he would be better with my aunt. She knows that my brother is a slob. And is giving him a good kick up the arse to get his life together and SHT. I have spoken with a lawyer who has helped me with a lot of things. Including getting my son legally adopted by my aunt and her husband. He will still be staying with me until I pass. As a lot of you suggested, I made recordings and videos of myself, giving him advice for his milestones. For example, when he loses his first tooth, turns 10, 13, 16, 18, 21, his first girlfriend or boyfriend if he likes. I've made a video in case he is in any way LGBT+, leaves secondary school, goes to university, gets married, or has any kids. There are also things I've put into writing, like how his mother died, and that he was supposed to grow up with a twin brother who also sadly passed. I've also had my lawyer help me set up a little trust, to will him £40,000 from my girlfriend's father when he died. She put the money in a joint bank account that I got when she passed in case he needs help with university or decides to go traveling. All I have to do now is enjoy the time I have left with him. I've moved my younger brother into my flat, so that there will be someone to find me every day when I go. When I'm gone. I can at least be comforted by the fact that the son I love so much is being taken care of, and that I will see the girl I love again and our other angel, whom I never got to meet. Thank you all again. Edit. This is OP's brother writing this edit. He has since died. OP's brother has since made a post on his account to grieve the loss of his brother. My brother is dead, and the family can't handle it. This account isn't mine, but it was the one my brother had when he needed advice for his son. He has since died. Terminal cancer killed him in his sleep about three and a half weeks ago, and my family is in bits over it. I was living with him in his final months to help him look after his son and keep an eye on him. I was the one that found him, and I'm constantly going back to the night before, when we had a few drinks and played on an old PS2, revisiting our childhood. The last time I saw him alive, he said he was going to bed, gave me a massive hug, and checked in on his son before calling it a night. The next morning, when I found the body, I called my mom and I called my dad. I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. The next thing I remember was his body being taken out of the flat. Since then, we've had the funeral. My nephew is now living with my aunt, and the family is just constantly going over things. Mom feels guilt over the arguments she had with him. Dad feels guilt about leaving when we were all younger, and my older brother hates himself because he feels like he was a terrible sibling. Why was it him who got cancer? He had already been through so much, and now he is gone. How is that fair? How will that little boy of his grow up, not knowing who his daddy was? I've been over to my aunt's every day to see him, and to feel close to my brother. But I'm just keeping going from sad to furious with some occasional numbness. I know a lot of people on here spoke to him. And he was so grateful for their advice. And I want to say thank you to them. But now I want to know. How do I deal with his loss? Second story. OP's obsessive husband couldn't stop including his female nemesis, 
and how much he hates her. Turns out he is cheating with her because she makes him alive and hopeful, so OP served him divorce. Now he wants reconciliation. I have this itch in my brain that I need to scratch. I 32F have been married to my husband 33M for five years now. Recently, about a year ago, my husband's office hired a new employee. Let's call her Jess 25. My husband would often complain about how stupid she was. Here are some lists of complaints. She always tries to act smart even though she is a kid. She always laughs at silly little things, which he finds annoying. He sometimes criticizes her carefree nature. He once told me she was dressed like a clown, she just wore red lipstick. It feels like every time he comes from the office, it is always him complaining about her or what she did. And usually, it is just some normal SHT. He told me Jess teases him by calling him an old man. He really hates that. It feels like this girl Jess is always on his mind. The other day, we went shopping. I really liked a red shoe and asked my husband how I looked. He said it would look gorgeous on me. Then, out of nowhere he said, Thank God you do not have stinky feet like Jess. She always wears shoes that look weird on her. And then he proceeds to say how much he hates her. And that she is his nemesis. This was clearly out of nowhere. The thing that confirmed my suspicion is that he follows Jess on Instagram. We were sitting on our couch. I was watching a movie, and he was scrolling through Instagram. He was on Jess's page, literally binge-watching her content. I mean if he hates her and hates everything she does, then why is he stalking her? I did bring it up, and he said that I was being ridiculous, and that I should know that he hates Jess. So thinking that there is something going on is making me look insecure. I do not know what to believe. My instincts tell me something else, but logically, if he hates someone that much, he wouldn't bring them up in every conversation. Where do I go next? Comments. No decent loops. He's obsessed. He uses hate as a cover-up to explain why he's thinking about her so often. It's also a handy tool to gaslight you by suggesting you're crazy for thinking anything is going on because he obviously hates her. Come on, the guy brought her up unprompted. He's 33 years old. Call his arse out. Perfect judge. Before the OP even mentioned Instagram, I suspected something else like this. It's bizarre and unhinged to just hate someone for no reason and mention their feet unprompted. Why would anyone do that? Something doesn't add up here. OP. I feel like there is something he is hiding from me. Ever since Jess came, he has been more secretive. He always puts his phone down. Update. Five days later. Well, I have answers now. They were having an emotional affair. I learned of it when I checked my husband's phone don't give me all that crap about privacy. I pressed him hard on it, and he admitted he has a thing for her. He had taken a day off from work so that they could go hiking or just hang out. He swears he didn't sleep with her or kiss her. I'm not sure about that. Their chats look more like banter. I asked him if he liked her. He was hesitant, but eventually admitted having a crush on her. I asked why. Why does he have a crush on her when she is not someone he likes? His logic is, she makes me feel alive. She makes me do crazy things, and she has an energy that makes me feel special. I am hopeless. For months, I have asked him to take a break, and we will go to Italy like we always wanted. He made nothing but excuses. I wanted to tell him he was chasing a fantasy. He likes the version of her she presented herself as. But who am I to convince a lovesick man who would cheat on his wife for five years just because she is not energetic? I left my house. I am staying with a friend. I haven't decided on divorce yet. I am scared to start over at 32. I want to become a mother, but that means I would waste my good years searching for another man. I cannot believe he is falling for the obvious manic pixie dream girl thing. If he really wanted energy and to do crazy things, why couldn't he just say that? I would love to go hiking. I would love to skip work and just be outside with him all day. Yet he chooses a girl he claims he hates, but not really. He has been calling and texting me non-stop. He wants to work this out. He even offered to quit and change jobs. But that's not going to solve anything, will it? Comments. Wolverino 8799. If the house is in both of your names, move back home and ask him to leave. He cheated and he should be the one to move out. Speak to several divorce attorneys in your area and pick one. Start the divorce process. Has your husband tried to contact you? Has he cut his affair partner off? OP. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in two days since I moved here. And the house belonged to his grandma. But I don't want the house. We have spent some good memories there, and those are all tainted. His defense is still that I shouldn't feel too bad, because he never had a physical affair. Update. Eight days later. I do not know how to start this update. For those of you who don't know, yes, I am taking the divorce route. 
I do not think I can reconcile with him after what he confessed to. The day after I made my last post, my husband asked to talk to me. He said he is ready to be truthful because he doesn't want this to ruin our marriage. He is willing to try therapy and counseling. He said he does have a crush on her and oftentimes fantasizes about Jess. But they are just fantasies. Nothing more. He confessed that though there hasn't been any physical touch or contact, he did have a moment of weakness, and they masturbated in front of each other. He swears he didn't touch her. They just jerked off in front of each other in his car. It was Jess's idea. She knew about his crush, but she has morals, so they found a weird loophole. I wish I was joking, because this sounds unreal to me. He is still insisting that was the only actual thing they did. Nothing more. He has been begging me to come back home. He went from begging to blaming me, and when I said I wanted a divorce, he was cursing me. I have served him. I have yet to hear from him or his lawyer. I know some people will say I am making a huge mistake and that I am throwing this out easily, but I do not think I will be able to trust him again. If there is no trust in a relationship, then what is there? I am surprised my parents were on my side. My mom told me I shouldn't have to beg someone to love me or respect me. His lying to me was a huge disrespect. A relationship cannot survive if there is no respect. Also, I think I offended a lot of people in my last post because they thought I was saying women over 30 are old. I do not think so. But I grew up in a culture where women over 30 are considered leftovers. Though my parents and family members do not think that, there are people around me who do, and it has been ingrained. I have tried hard to unlearn it, but there are some remnants. I do not know what the future holds for me. I am too depressed and angry to think that. P.S. Yes, I am in therapy. I have been in and out of therapy since 25. Comments. Francis. That's a really hot actual scenario to do with someone. It's totally worth leaving him over. Cheating, in my opinion. OP. He still insists, it is not cheating. Because of this, they never touched each other. Sick at all. He can insist on everything he wants, but that doesn't make it so. Just a slice of hope. Oh, he's lying. And it definitely was more trickle truth. He's having a full-on emotional and physical affair. Find him the book or PDF of Not Just Friends by Shirley Glass. You also need an STD or ST I test as soon as possible. Update. Four months later. Hi everyone, it's been a long time. I was busy, so I couldn't post much. The good news is that I am officially divorced. As many of you suggested, I didn't get a house in the divorce like many of you suggested. Honestly, I didn't even want it. I have been living with my parents for a while. I know it stinks because I am in my thirties and have to start at zero. There were times I wanted to stop the divorce and reconcile. But the disrespect towards me and my marriage is something I cannot get past. I know many people have PM'd me to reconsider it. But I'm sorry to disappoint you. As for my ex, he is dating his nemesis. He still insists nothing more happened. They didn't have SX. The biggest plot twist for me was when I learned that he and his mistress are in an open relationship. It was funny to me. But now I don't have to hear from them. I am not dating anyone now. Maybe take a break from dating. Thank you all for supporting me. Reddit has been a great distraction for me during these tough times. Comments. Majestic Post 1684. Congrats on being free from the train wreck of your ex's life. But I do wish you well in life. I was in my mid-thirties after my divorce when I started again. I'm turning 40 this year, and I'm a mom to a nine-month-old baby. Third story. OP uninvited her entitled parents from Thanksgiving, after they referred to OP's brother's baby as their first grandchild in front of OP's three adopted children causing them to be traumatized. Now, the brother demands an apology, or he will walk off. I 32F have been with my wife Ava 34F for 8 years now, but we've been married for 5 years. She was a single mom of 3 kids when we started dating. She had 2 daughters now 10 and 12 and a son now 16. I've watched these kids grow up. I've read the bedtime stories, done bath time, the first days of school, PT, a meetings, all of it. I very much consider them to be my kids, and they've been calling me mom for almost six years now. My brother Ivan 28M just had a baby girl with his fiancée Sarah 27F. I love my niece, and my kids adore their cousin. My kids have been the only grandchildren on my side of the family since Ava and I got together, and there's never been a moment where the kids and my wife were treated like they didn't belong. My brother is their uncle, my mom and dad are their nana, and pop the kids see my family as their family, and I always thought that my family felt the same way about them. The kids and I were over at my brother's house just hanging out, and my parents ended up dropping by with gifts for my niece. 
Ivan laughed when he saw the toys and told our mom and dad that they were going to end up spoiling her rotten. My mom said that since my niece is their first grandchild, of course they have to spoil her. My kids were sitting in the living room with all of us, and my youngest daughter looked hurt when she realized what my mother said. My son and my 12-year-old didn't fully react to it, but I could tell it bothered the both of them too. Sarah spoke up and said, Oh, you mean first grandbaby, not first grandchild? My dad shook his head and replied that my niece was their first grandchild. I didn't want my kids to keep sitting there and listening to that, so I handed my son my keys and told him to wait in the car with his sisters. When they were gone, I asked my parents why the hell they'd say that my kids weren't their grandchildren, and my mom said they couldn't be their grandchildren because they weren't really my children. My wife and I were going to be hosting Thanksgiving at our house this year, but I told my parents that if they didn't view my kids as their family, then they could just host a meal at their own house with their real family while I spent the holiday with mine. I left before they could say anything else to me, and my wife and I have reiterated to the children that they will always be my kids, and I will always be their other mom, regardless of our DNA. My brother is pissed at me now because he thinks I reacted too harshly and that I should try to see where my parents are coming from. My mom texted saying that she and my dad love the kids, but they still aren't their grandchildren, and she hopes that we can come to understand that because she doesn't want this to ruin my niece's first Thanksgiving. I haven't replied back. I meant what I said, but I'm worried that maybe I'm reacting too harshly. Eta info. I adopted all three of the kids about four years ago, so they aren't just my parents' step-grandchildren. Even if I hadn't legally adopted them, they'd still be my kids in my eyes. Edit no two. My wife's parents don't have a relationship with the kids. When my wife came out, they pretty much stopped speaking with her entirely. Their biological dad is not involved, and neither is his family. He lost his rights to the children before Ava and I started dating. The 10-year-old has never met him, the 12-year-old doesn't remember him, and the 16-year-old wants nothing to do with him. My parents wanted the kids to call them Nana and Pop. I didn't make the kids start calling them that. Relevant comments. The worst part of it for me is that they said it in front of them. I'd still be upset knowing they thought it, but the look on my youngest daughter's face when she heard my mother say that just broke my heart. I tend to go mama bear whenever I even think someone has stepped out of line with the kids, so I was worried that maybe I was doing too much in my reaction. My brother still feels like I should talk it out with them, but I don't know that I could forgive it honestly. I've been out as a lesbian since I was a teenager, but I always sort of had this idea that I'd never find love and settle down. Then I met Ava and those kids, and my whole point of view changed. Six months into dating Ava, I realized I was keeping snacks in my bag for the kids. I guess maybe my parents could have just gotten used to the idea of me never getting married or having a family, but they never made it seem like they weren't happy for me when I told them about Ava and our kids. They said they wanted the kids to call them Nana and Pop, but I haven't spoken to them since this whole thing happened, so I don't know if they still want the kids to call them that. The kids aren't exactly jumping at the bit to see them now though, so I doubt they'd call them those names anytime soon. You can put as much emphasis on DNA as you want to, but at the end of the day, those are my children. It doesn't matter that I didn't grow them myself, that they never came out of me, or that they don't share my genetics. They call me their mom, and that's what I am to them. If I ever got pregnant and made a baby myself, I know I'd love that kid the same way I do my other three. Being a mom is more than making a child. It's being there for all the moments after. I'm fortunate enough to have been allowed those moments, and to have been given the title of mother. Yes, biology is a thing. And yes, I know DNA means a lot to some people, but it doesn't matter to me. It wasn't some happenstance of nature that allowed me to be their other mom. I am their other mom because I chose to be, and because they and my wife of course chose to let me. It's not a substitution, because I don't believe that there is one default or correct way of creating a family. Even gay penguins are out there, adopting each other's eggs. If Mother Nature has the penguins doing it, I'd argue that my family structure fits the bill of naturally occurring just fine. OP was voted NTA. Update. Hi. I thought I'd just leave you all with an update here, since it doesn't look as though things are going to change anytime soon. My wife and I talked with all three of the kids separately and asked them what they wanted to do for Thanksgiving, if they wanted my parents there, and if they still wanted to see them. My son and oldest daughter have made it very clear that they are mostly upset at my parents for hurting their younger sister's feelings, and they felt that if my parents apologized to her and tried to make it up to her, then they'd be okay with seeing them still. My ten-year-old took it the hardest out of the three. For her, they're the only grandparents she's ever known, and this whole thing really crushed her. My wife and I explained to her 
and to all of the kids that none of this was her fault, that she didn't cause it, and that we're both equally her moms, and she is equally our kid, no matter what DNA says. She told us that she didn't want to talk to my parents, but that she wanted me to make sure they knew that she wasn't mad at them. She was just hurt. I called my dad and told him how hurt my kids were by what was said by him and my mom, and that I would appreciate it if they apologized to the kids for being inconsiderate of their presence and their feelings. My dad said that he and my mother never intended to hurt the kids' feelings, but they can't change the fact that those aren't their grandchildren, and that the kids shouldn't be so upset at the truth. I hung up on him. I know I can't make them view my kids as their grandchildren, but the fact that both of my parents are being so inconsiderate of the fact that they seriously upset my children just makes this whole thing even worse. I texted my brother and told him that I was sorry if he felt like he was being put in the middle of something. But as a parent, my priority is my kids, and I won't apologize for protecting them from what I think will hurt them further. I guess Sarah talked to him or something because he apologized to me and said he'd like for his daughter to have Thanksgiving with her aunts and her cousins. I also thanked Sarah separately for offering to help my parents out and trying to salvage the situation. She's a total sweetheart, and I love her. Thanksgiving is going to be hosted at my house, just without my parents there. It's unfortunate, but like I said, my kids are my priority, and I refuse to have them sit at a table with people who can't even take a minute to show them some empathy or basic kindness. I didn't expect that post to take off the way it did, so I wasn't able to respond to all of you, because there were just so many. But I really appreciated all of your feedback and suggestions. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.